the public is angry. Over 80% now in polls against it. The more they learn about the health care, the more angry they get. He is gone. And here is CNN's spin. Specter's loss, Paul's victory. Shake up murky political map. And then they go on in the first line of the article, voters sent mixed signals in Tuesday's primary election in Pennsylvania, Kentucky, and Arkansas. They tossed out a veteran senator, nominated a Tea Party back candidate, and also chose a longtime aide to fill the U.S. House seat vacant by the death of Democratic Representative John Murtha. No, those aren't uh, mixed signals. Everybody feels sorry for Murtha, so, and he's had a very strong Democrat liberal uh, area, so the aide gets in. And then you've got. Uh, Rand Paul trouncing the establishment Republican, and then you've got the establishment Democrat flipped from Republican, Arlen Specter thrown out uh, for the uh, liberal. But see, the people just want someone that will actually do what they say they're going to do. They want someone who is seen as anti-establishment, and that was only in the primary. Now we'll see if this Democrat wins in Pennsylvania against the Republican. Whoever is seen as anti-establishment is going to win. That's why Rick Perry's running around talking about secession and putting out stories about how he's in the, the hill country of Austin jogging in Westlake Hills, killing coyotes, and how he carries guns, and how he's you know anti-New World Order when he's a Bilderberg Group attendee. That's the only reason Perry won, is because he posed as one of us. And, and here's another big problem. I told you this a year and a half ago because he's the top insider in the Republican Party right now uh, when it comes to taking over political operations. The Republicans in 1994 swept in. They were going to cut taxes. They were going to reverse gun-grabbing legislation. They were going to you know, really turn this country around. So the Clinton boys bombed Oklahoma City, A, to demonize states' rights and the patriot movement, but B, they sent in Gingrich to sabotage the Republicans. Well, he's telling Politico and others, as I covered yesterday, that he is going to run for uh, president in the next two years, into 2012, uh, that he's going to get all the establishment backing, and that he's going to try to lead this, this, this Republican uh, takeover of the House and Senate that he says is an 80% chance. And I agree with him. Uh, it, it, it's more than 80%. The problem is... We need to get Rand Paul-type Republicans in who are anti-war, anti-Patriot Act, pro-Bill of Rights, Constitution, anti-global warming taxes, pro-Second Amendment, who will basically alert us to what's happening in the Senate, blow the whistle on what's going on up there, use that power as a U.S. Senator as a bully pulpit to educate everyone and to then show the population that true constitutionalists can win for even big races like governor, not just state legislature, but governor and U.S. senator and House member. And this is the beginning of the collapse of the new world order. They are not invincible. It is not written in stone that they must win. We can be given a reprieve like Nineveh. We can be given a reprieve just like with Jonah. We can be given a hundred-year reprieve. It is a mind game, a globalist mind control operation to say that it's the end of the world and we're about to all be raptured and that uh, as Americans we have to just sit here and suck our thumbs. Now, this is supposedly a predominantly Protestant nation. It was founded by pro Protestants, uh, but all religions are welcome you know, under the First Amendment. And you wonder why there isn't going to be one Protestant on the court. Well, that's because Protestants for 150 years have been waiting for the rapture, sucking their thumbs. And it's, and it's this overall globalist-funded, sit in your house, wait for the end. If you see somebody getting stabbed down the street, don't help them, because uh, it's the end of the world anyways. Or if you see corrupt thugs taking over your government, taking over your society, or the government shipping in narcotics, just go pray about it. Well... Faith without works is dead, and uh, again, there is this mind control out there that, that, that Christians are supposed to just not be involved in their society. I know this. I have duty. Justice be done by the heavens fall. 
I'm going to do my duty regardless if the end of the world is next week. And it could be with the Hadron Collider and antimatter weapons and asteroids and everything else. You never know. The point is, I'm going to do the right thing. You know, if my kid's playing in the street and about to get run over, I'm not going to say, well, it might be the end of the world next week anyway, so I'll let my kid get run over. No. And it's the same thing with everything else. So we're going to break what these victories of, of, of political outsiders means and how it's panicking the system. This is key. Front porch sitting in an old rocking chair. We're back, my friends. Rand Paul savages Obama's catastrophic green economy. Very exciting. That article's up at prisonplanet.com. He came out and he said, I've got a message to Washington. We're taking our government back. We are going to defeat the globalist. We are going to defeat the new world order. We are going to defeat the cap and trade global tax. It doesn't get any better than that. Specter's loss, Paul's victory, shakes up murky political map. Then it says voters sent mixed signals in Tuesday's primary elections in Pennsylvania and Kentucky. No, they didn't. Anyone seen as an establishment whore, anyone seen as being old guard, Republican or Democrat, is out. And Rand Paul, if we get behind him, is going to win the Senate in Kentucky in November. Look at what happened in Utah. With their Senate primaries, old guard Republican, pro-open borders, pro-globalism, gone. Anti-New World Order candidate wins. Now he's got to defeat the Democrat. Got a good chance of doing it in Utah. This isn't just going to be Democrats being thrown out and then a bunch of neocon Republicans getting in. No. And that's why the New World Order is so deadly dangerous right now. They know they're losing, and I've read their white papers recently on air. We've covered U.N. documents, the Copenhagen Treaty. They're panicking. They're openly saying we don't have much time to set up our world government. And we have a new video coming up in the next segment. It's up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Paul Watson's doing a detailed article that's going to be up in the next hour or so at PrisonPlanet.com. Uh, on this important subject. How many globalists, UN heads, EU heads, Gordon Brown before he was thrown out of office, are openly calling for world government right now? How many? A lot are calling for it. How many clips have we played? And see, this new video clip we have of Zbigniew Brzezinski, one of Obama's chief advisors, in this video, he says, we've got a problem, as he's addressing the Council on Foreign Relations. He says, we've got a problem. Our global government is not completed yet. He says, the G20 is our best vehicle right now for world government, not the United Nations. And he said, the problem we have is, for the first time in human history, and this is true, for the first time in human history, the entire world is awake to the true nature of the political system. That's why for 50 years they've denied they were building a world government using the blood, sweat, and tears and energy of the United States and Europe. And he admits that. He says it's been a global government based in and around the Atlantic system. That means Europe, Western Europe, England, the United States, Canada. Australia is an auxiliary in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And he, he lays it all out and then says, global government. We don't have the global government yet, and everybody has woken up to us. That's what he says in this video and audio that's coming up in the next segment. And then he talks about, he does it all in, in, in bureaucrat speak. He's a great speaker, very intelligent, very wicked. He's one of the chief planners of our world. He's probably more of a master planner than even Henry Kissinger. He is a master planner. And he breaks down the true power structure of the world and says for the first time, this is such a big deal, this is what we've been telling you, for the first time, the planet is awake to the true political structure of the globe. That's why they'd always deny it was a children's game. 
We could never have a real debate about this. They would just say on the news, anybody that says there's a global banking cartel and a world government being set up is a racist kook who wants to murder your children, basically, and who wears swastika underwear. Had nothing to do with that. And the media would only give attention to white supremacist groups and others who were covering this information on HBO specials and CNN specials to falsely paint the a picture that anyone that talks about freedom and liberty must be an extremist so that the general public would get scared away from it so they could stall a real debate until it was too late. But you know what? Tens of millions of people globally didn't care what labels we were given, didn't care how we were demonized, didn't care how we were set up, didn't care how we were provocateur, didn't care. We were going to expose these people knowing that as their system came out in the open, that would then bring them down. And that has now happened.